Welcome. Today I am going to show you how to make risoles de camarão, uh, which in English is risoles, and it comes from uh, influence of the French who make it with puff pastry. This is different uh, in Portuguese cuisine because we use a uh, masa cozida or a dough that is similar to the shoe pastry. I'm going to begin with doing the filling. We want to make prepare the filling first. So we're going to add two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to melt that. Here we are melting the butter and I am going to add it's about a quarter cup of chopped onion, finely chopped. We're going to let that cook until it's very lightly golden. I'm going to add a little bit of spice, a little hot sauce. You can put a teaspoon to two or to your taste if you like them really hot. And we have here a cup of milk. Put that in. Now you don't want to bring that milk to a boil because then it'll curdle. So you want to just keep it so it gets to the point of scalding. Add your salt, white pepper, and some nutmeg. And while that is warming up, I'm going to make a cornstarch slurry with two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. And you make sure that the water is cold because you do not want it to become lumpy. This cooking and we're going to add about a tablespoon of chopped minced cilantro. Now you if you're not fond of cilantro you can add parsley. I just happen to like cilantro. I think it goes great with shellfish. And so now we're going to do the slurry. The, the milk is simmering. You can see the steam. It's not boiling. And I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit because if it cooks too qu quickly, you're going to have it really in a thick mass. So stir it up, mix it in. And as soon as it starts to thicken, I'll show you what it's like. And what I have here is a cup and a half of chopped shrimp. I pre-cook it for about a minute. Um, you don't have to, you can put it in raw, but because um, it will cook again anyway. But I like to pre-cook it. And sometimes if you have leftover shrimp in the refrigerator, you can use that too. But it's about, about a pound or a cup and a half chopped. Now, you can make these with um, something else. If you are allergic to shrimp, you can make this with chicken, you can make it with codfish, you can make it with rabbit. You could even make it with beef, ground beef, anything you like. You can even make it with just vegetables. Okay, now you see it's getting a little thicker. And I'm waiting for it just to thicken up a little bit more and then we will add the shrimp. Now this particular filling recipe is in my first book, Portuguese Homestyle Cooking. In my second book, um, there is a recipe for uh, the filling made with chicken.
Okay, so now you see this getting thicker, and I'm going to add the shrimp. And we only need to let it heat through because this has already been cooked. I'm going to shut the heat. And so this is what we have. Very easy to make. You can even make this the day before. And keep it chilled in the refrigerator so you're ready to use it. So I'm going to transfer this to a bowl and let it cool down. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna make the dough. And this is a typical uh, pate choux dough, but we call it masa cozida. And you, um, it's very simple to make. Uh, in making this, um, I'm going to put in two cups of milk. And we're gonna put in two, uh, four tablespoons of butter. And we're gonna put in a teaspoon of table salt. Now we're gonna bring this to a scald. Again, do not boil it because you do not want it to curdle. Now there are two ways of doing this dough and rolling it out. Um, in my first book, I explained uh, to roll it out on a lightly floured workspace. And this, this time I'm showing you a different method that I, I prefer. But the, the trick of it is you must keep the dough warm. You cannot let it get cold. So rolling it out on a stone or metal surface will not work. Um, it, it'll get cold too soon. So I would suggest either a cutting board or a wooden butcher block top or a mica counter, something that isn't cold. As you can see the butter is melted almost completely. You can tell when the milk is almost ready because you'll see little bubbles form around the edges and as you can see the steam is coming up. So I just want to get it to the verge of boiling. And When I dump this in, what you, what you want to do is see it's just starting to bubble a little bit in the middle. So it's on a high simmer. Okay, so now it's, I'm going to dump this in all at once and you got to stir it real quick. You can put that down a little. And stiff to, to, uh, to, uh, stir, but you want to do it, you see it pulling away from the size of the pan. Into a ball. Okay, so I'm going to remove it from the heat and I'm going to lightly butter this surface just so that we can Okay. So I'm going to empty this out onto this buttered surface. It's really hot so you don't want to burn yourself. So you want to just be careful, let it just cook a little bit, I mean uh, cool a little bit. You want to knead it, just knead it enough to make it smooth. 
while it's hot, and it's really hot, so I'm trying real careful not to burn my fingers, but a little spatula comes in handy. Now, what I'm going to do is make it into a ball and then cut it in two. Okay. Put it right under the pan, it'll keep warm. The second one, run in a ball, but then I'm going to form a log. Got a little piece of parsley in there. Okay. Okay. So now, I'll let that cool just a second, briefly, very briefly. All right. So here we have this log of dough and it's hot. It's cooling down quite quickly. So what this is how we're going to shape it. And I have my one a three inch, two and a half, three inch, the size you want. And with a dough, you're going to roll it out just enough to be around. You don't need any flour on this. You just roll it out to be about that thick trusty ice cream scoop. These work wonders. And you put this right in the middle. Fold it over. Press with your fingers. Take your, your circle. And you're done. So we'll do that again. And the thing that's the beauty about this, while especially while it's warm, it folds up um, and sticks to the dough uh, again, and the other thing about this that's really good is while it's warm, um, you really don't have to brush it with anything. But if you were to use, um, if you were to let this get cold because it has butter in it, it'll firm up and that's what makes it hard to roll out. So you can see, you don't want it too thick because you're going to have two, two edges together and that can be thick enough. All right, so I take some more of this filling in the middle, fold it over, press down around so you don't have the edges too thick. Take your ring. If you don't have these rings, you can use a glass, but glass, you have to be careful that it doesn't break um, or you don't have a sharp edge. And then you just Continue and do the whole sheet like this. You, you do all the dough, you fold it back like that, keep rolling. Okay, so here we have the resoys made or the resolves, and we get about two, two and a half dozen. I have another pan over there. And if you have any leftover, you can freeze it or stuff some mushrooms with it and bake the mushrooms in the oven. You can it doesn't go to waste. Or you can cut back on the amount of the filling recipe. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to bread these. I bread them ahead of time so that when I'm frying them, especially when you're by yourself, um, you want to have everything ready to go. It's important when you're doing any recipe, and especially something like this, that you line things up in segments of uh, your filling ingredients and the grouping of your your dough ingredients, and now we're doing the breading. So, typical breading is flour, then egg wash, then breadcrumb. In this particular one, we're not using flour, we're just going straight to the egg, because it is a dough, and we're gonna put them on breadcrumbs. Coat them with the breadcrumbs, put them back on the tray, and at that point, we will be ready to fry. If you make these a day ahead or a couple days ahead of when you need them, or even a month ahead of when you need them, all you have to do is once you put them back on the tray here, you can um, cover them again with another sheet of uh, plastic wrap and stick them in the freezer, pressing out any, any air. And then once they're frozen, you can either leave them in the tray if you have room in your, in your freezer or put them in Ziploc bags. So here I'm taking 
the risois or the risol, coat them. On the left hand. And you just put it right back on the tray. Simple as that. Right hand in the wash. Coat with the, coat with the dry hand. Okay, so here we are. We got everything breaded and ready to fry. Again, if you're not going to use it, serve them today, and you want to save them for tomorrow, next week, next month, just take another layer of plastic wrap, and as they are right now, you can just make them closer together, push them up, put plastic wrap over, press down, and get some of the air out, seal the edges, and put them in the freezer, and then put them in a Ziploc bag. But today we're going to fry them because we have some people that want to test them. So here we are. You want to make sure, you, I mean, you're frying in either vegetable, corn oil, if you like canola oil, that's fine. I usually use vegetable or corn oil. You want to make sure it's hot, and like 350, 360, and usually you can tell because when you drop something in, it comes right back up frying. So we're going to put, we'll do our test one, and you want to make sure you stir it so it doesn't stick to the bottom right away, but I'm doing one first just to make sure. And if you add too many, what happens, it takes longer to brown. And you want to get them to a nice golden color, not too dark, not to that, ap it's, sometimes if they get too dark, they don't look appetizing. Coming nice, put another one in. No, I, two to three at a time. I use a small pot. Stainless steel is a little bit easier to clean than if you were using uh, a different type of pot. Get to the point you might have to lower the heat just a tad because you don't want it oil to boil over. Okay, so. And basically because the dough is, the filling has already been cooked, you want it to get hot, but you want the dough to cook a second time to get nice and golden. Now I like this kind of color. Something to that. You could, if you want them a little darker, you could make it a little darker. We'll do that a little dark if you wish. But they don't. When you have the oil at the right temperature, it doesn't take long. Okay. Just drop it on toweling. And I'm going to put another one in while we're at it. I made these a little bigger, so um, we got like about 26 of them, but you can get a few more if you make them a little smaller and roll the dough a little thinner. But if your dough starts to stick to the, co uh, the counter or the board while you're rolling it, just add a little bit extra soft butter t on the board periodically. probably wondering, can I freeze them once they've been cooked? Yeah, you can, um, but I find that when you freeze them before they're fried, um, it's better. They, they seem fresher uh, after, after you fry them. And the other thing, if you want, you can try baking them. If you don't want to be frying food, you can take a, um, you know, air, fry, uh, the spray, the oil that, for spraying, and spray them on both sides and put them on a, a baking sheet and um, fry them. Well, oven fry them, I should say. Okay, so here you go. Here they are, ready to eat. You can make them little, make them small, but whatever you do, make them because your guests will thank you. 
In fact, now isn't that, doesn't that look luscious? Buon appetito.